Good morning and Merry Christmas. Welcome to our Christmas Day liturgy this morning. We celebrate the Right One liturgy of the prayer book. We have the bulletin link and you may follow along with that if you're able to download that. Or you may also follow along with your own version of the prayer book as I will be giving page numbers for the prayer book liturgy as we pray this Christmas Day. Thank you for your presence and your prayers. Please do take a moment and share greetings, a comment. Let us know that you are here and praying with us this morning. Special thanks this day, as always, to Canon Mark Lubbock, organist and choir master of St. Stephen's, for his ministry among us. Special thanks to the quartet of section leaders from the St. Stephen's Choir who lead us in song this Christmas Day. Those four persons would be Carol Tome, Frank Spencer, George Lewandowski, and Jessica Hitchcock. Special thanks also to Earl Orcutt, who assisted with these services, getting them ready by recording Mark and the quartet and all of the music for this service, as well as the Christmas Eve liturgy that we kept last evening. And special thanks this day also to Vanessa Casterline and Marcia Ebert to read the readings for this day, and to Linda Abner and Sue Janet Mason, who lead us in the prayers of the people. Thank you for joining us this Christmas Day. We pray the Right One Liturgy from the Book of Common Prayer. The Right One Liturgy begins on page 323 of the prayer book. But first, dear friends, let us prepare our hearts and our souls to pray by listening to the sound of music, and by lifting our hearts in songs and praises.
We pray the right one liturgy of the prayer book, which begins on page 323 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit. Through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen.
reading from Jeremiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he was created in the world. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, 
and he sustains all things by his powerful world, word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to, for to who, which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you, or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds, and his servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of the gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of the, your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak you will roll them up, and like clothing they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas. I have my hymnal in front of me this morning because this reading from Isaiah has brought to mind for me the famous refrain of a Christmas carol. One that I dare say you know and know well, I imagine. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Today, dear friends, we celebrate the birth of God into our human flesh, into the humanity created out of love by the hand of God from the depths of that perfect love that is God. We are called as followers of Jesus to proclaim this holy birth to announce the Christmas joy to the whole world and for the whole world. We who are an Easter people, even on Christmas Day, are called to be a Christmas people also, to proclaim the nearness of God with angels and shepherds and with all of creation. But how do we do so? Friends, we do so in ways greater than merely wishing a Merry Christmas to those whom we encounter this day and throughout all of the days of this Christmas tide, beyond this day when after this morning, let alone the rest of this day, the world around us will have grown weary of Christmas and be readily moving on with great speed, with breakneck speed, to something else, anything else, by the time the sun sets this day, if not before. For a moment, let me suggest that there is something greater than simply Merry Christmas for us to proclaim and share. Our Orthodox Christian friends have a greeting shared among them in these days of celebrating the Nativity of our Lord. They greet one another, not for 12 days, as we do in the West, but for eight days, 
between the Feast of the Nativity and the Feast of the Circumcision, the 25th of December and the 1st of January on our calendar, the new calendar, the 7th of January through the 14th of January on the old Julian calendar. What is their greeting in these days of celebrating the Nativity? They greet one another with the proclamation, Christ is born. And when they receive that greeting, they respond, glorify him. Christ is born, glorify him. And here is why I like that greeting so much more than Merry Christmas. Friends, we too often get caught up in things of Christmas that are wonderful, but also terribly distracting from what we celebrate on this Feast of the Nativity and in these days of Christmas. Christmas trees are beautiful. I love them. But friends, today is not about trees or decorations or gifts underneath those trees. It's not about beautiful lights, although I love those lights too. The more sparkly, the more colorful, the more I love them. But it's not about the lights. Rather, today is about the light that shines in the darkness and dispels the darkness of our world and of our hearts. Today is a day of proclamation that God is near, that God is among us, that God is for us, present in the most vulnerable among us to point to the most powerful and tender love and lover we know. God, Emmanuel, God with us, God who has pitched a tent among us to dwell with us. Today the prophet Isaiah declares our feet to be beautiful. We are the messengers who proclaim Christ, his birth, his presence, from mountains and in valleys, not only as a child, but as God among us, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God who seeks us out and is bringing us to a kingdom that endures forever, a kingdom where God will wipe away every tear and every sorrow, kingdom where God will have put to death, death itself and suffering. And we shall be found with God for as long as the love of God endures and God reigns. There is no end to that kingdom to that love, to that presence of God among us. And we are called to make that good news, that glad tidings known by allowing our beautiful feet to take us into the world to go and tell everyone. This is our mission, dear friends, not only today and not only for the remainder of these 12 days of Christmas. This is our way of life as disciples of Christ. We will bring these Christmas days to a close with the Feast of the Epiphany on the 6th of January. On the Sunday that follows that feast, we will stand with Jesus in the baptismal waters. We will walk the way of the cross once more and celebrate with great joy the resurrection. We shall be a gospel people who walk in the footsteps of Christ, whose birth we celebrate today 
proclaiming in all our days the presence of Christ with us, for us, of God among us. Today we feel like Marines, ready to go and tell and share and love. Let us never forget the excitement or lose the passion of this day. Christ is with us and among us and ever shall be. Today we keep the faith. Let us also remember to share it. Not only on our brightest days, but even in the darkest of days where we often feel like we are speaking into the wind, overwhelmed by voices louder than our own. Today and every day, let us with our beautiful feet go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. Christ is near. Jesus loves you and me. God is with us. Christ is born. Glorify him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our liturgy on page 327 of the prayer book, professing our faith in the traditional form of the Nicene Creed also found in your bullet. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray form five of the prayers of the people, which is found on page 389 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, Mike, our vice president, Thomas, our governor, George, our mayor, Joe, our president-elect, Kamala, our vice president-elect, and all others who hold public office and who have recently been elected to public office in our land. For the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Wilkes-Barre and the great Wyoming Valley, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially those who, on our, who are on our prayer share list in our collaborative ministry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially those on our shared prayer list in our collaborative ministry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of blessed Mary, mother of God, blessed Stephen, deacon and martyr, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. For thine is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
And now, dear friends, we bring this liturgy to a close by making an act of spiritual communion in recognition that we are still in days of pandemic when we are restricted from coming to the Eucharist and in the assurance and the comfort provided by the prayer book that Christ, whom we serve and in whose footsteps we follow, is never restricted, even though we may be. The prayer book reminds us that when anything or anyone stands in between our desire to come to the altar, to the Eucharist, to be fed and strengthened, and our ability to do so, that Christ, our great high priest, the true bread of heaven and the true cup of salvation, the true bishop of our souls, comes and meets us and feeds us both spiritually and sacramentally, fulfilling our longing and desiring and giving us what we need for the living of our days and for faithfulness in mission and ministry to which God has called all of us as the sons and daughters of God. And so now, dear friends, as we pray the words our Savior Christ has taught us, and as we pray the prayers of blessed Augustine of Hippo for a spiritual communion, may our souls and our hearts long beyond measure to be fed by Christ. And may we be comforted by the knowledge that even now Christ is already feeding our souls. We continue on page 336 in the prayer book and in the bulletin. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of thy church, where thy blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer thee praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by thy life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that thou art truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray thee to come into my heart. I unite myself with thee and embrace thee with all my heart, my soul, and my mind, let nothing separate me from thee. Let me serve thee in this life until by thy grace I come to thy glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of thy strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of thy holiness. And in the power of thy gracious might, Rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of thy kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth one God in glory everlasting. Amen. As our liturgy comes to a close, we receive the blessing for this liturgy 
in the midst of our celebration of the Incarnation, the Feast of the Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, from our diocesan bishop, our chief pastor, the Right Reverend Kevin Nichols, Ninth Bishop of Bethlehem. My friends, be not afraid. Trust that light will pierce the darkness. Know that you have been called forth for this moment, that together we can make a way out of no way. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you again, dear friends, for joining us and praying with us on this Christmas Day. If you've not done so yet, please do take a moment to post greeting and share a comment and know that you are always welcome to pray with us. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.